Now, I think we're up to about 40 people. So do you want to uh, go on to the first slide, Sally? <clears throat> Great. So today's agenda, we'll go through some introductions um, for those of you that don't know me. And I'm not, if I'm not highlighted on your screen, I'm Dr. Bob Martin, the uh, chair of the uh, Michigan Insurance Committee. And um, uh, I'm uh, one of the delegates for our region, um, recognizing a lot of the challenges that we have with e-billing. Um, Sally and Karen are going to go over some of the details over in their agenda today. And not just workers' comp, but also emphasizing no fault as well. Some of the legislative updates that we're seeing as well. Um, they'll talk about some of their capabilities, which are pretty impressive. Um, we've already discussed some items and they've already incorporated them into their frequently asked questions. And uh, at the end, certainly we'll have some questions and some demo follow-ups. <coughs> we ask you to put your phones on mute. Um, you should all be on mute as it is. Submit your questions using the chat feature. Hopefully, uh, I think most of you are aware of how to do that. Um, and I see some of you are sending me questions already by cell phone. Uh, we're going to ask them at the end of the presentation, unless they're very germane to something that's on right now. Um, and at the end of the webinar, we're going to send our slides to you. Shall we move on? And with that, I think I'll hand it over to Sally and Karen. Great, Bob. Thank you so much. We do appreciate everybody's time late in the evening, and uh, certainly we'll try to move quickly through uh, the information that we have to present. I'm Sally Balioni. I'm the sales manager here for Keras Intelligent Clearinghouse, and I oversee all of the submitter uh, sales and relationships uh, from providers to billing companies to hospitals and our software vendors. Uh, Karen Normington is joining me this evening. Uh, she's our sales executive in the New York area. Uh, so many of you, or some of you, may know her uh, already. Um, and thankfully, through her relationship with Bob, we were able to get this um, presentation on the calendar today. So we appreciate your time, and we will jump right in. If there are any um, you know, questions, as Bob said, we'll hold them to the end just to make it easier for um, everyone to hear the presentation, and then we can um, we can jump on the questions as as we see fit. Um, first, I'd like to set the stage a bit just to give everybody uh, kind of what the playing field here is, uh, the challenges that we see from submitters uh, with electronic billing for workers' compensation and no fault claims. As I'm sure you probably all know and do, 95% of all health insurance bills are already uh, transmitted electronically. However, less than 30% of the workers' comp and no-fault bills go that way, which is kind of odd because we're using, in most cases, the same medical billing system uh, for to produce the bills and the supporting docs, and legislation in many states across the nation um, are now requiring these bills to go electronically. So you probably have in your office set up a connection to an electronic clearinghouse um, for your health insurance bills. And in most cases, that same type of connection could be set up for the processing of the work company and, and the auto no fault bills. Um, What's happening in uh, electronic claims as we uh, look at what is required or what the criteria are for a complete electronic claim, um, you have to make sure that you're submitting the correct uniform claim format. We'll talk a little bit more about formats when we get into how the bills are transmitted. Um, and the compliance guidelines for the states that you do business in. So, I know this is a, a New York-based uh, organization, but some of you may be on the border of another state and processing bills to um, other states or other carriers. So we want to make sure that all of those compliance guidelines are uh, taken into consideration when the bills are being processed. Um, the type of um, the type of forms that are processed, the electronic attachments, you know, um, in these two categories, medical records are required. And as Bob said, many of the commercial clearinghouses do not have the capability to uh, attach that medical record to the bill electronically. In, in years past, um, 
medical records were either faxed or emailed or even paper mailed, snail mailed to the payers, and that is no longer considered um, an electronic uh, submission, nor is it considered uh, a clean or complete claim. So trying to move into the electronic world, what we really want to look for in a clearinghouse is uh, a number of different things to lessen the load for the submitter or the provider. Uh, we want to validate the, the claim completely prior to transmission, making sure that everything that needs to be there is there so that the bill does not get rejected by the payer. Um, notify the provider if data is missing. Um, so that means ensuring that you have a chance to fix it before it goes. As I said, uh, transmitting supporting documentation and medical records with those required forms. Um, in our case, we will also forward a copy of the bill uh, that is uh, transmitted to the work comp board. So the secondary step in New York that's a requirement, um, our clearinghouse will, will handle. Not everybody does that. So uh, again, when you're looking for uh, a relationship in this area, these are some of the things that you know are important to making sure that your job as the provider or submitter is easier. Um, also, uh, payer acknowledgments of claims, an electronic date and time stamp of receipt. Um, these are things that as a submitter, you really need in your day to day to ensure that you've met the timely filing requirements and you have proof that your bill was submitted that way. Um, also, any um, 835 EOR transmission uh, back to you as the provider uh, from the carriers who will and can uh, submit that to us electronically. So there are a number of points that in a relationship with a clearinghouse you want to ensure that you can get as many of these service features uh, when you're looking to um, when you're looking to partner with a clearinghouse. We're going to talk a little bit in uh, detail about us specifically, uh, just to give you some background for those of you who don't know. Um, Karisk Intelligent Clearinghouse was founded in uh, 2000, and it was developed out from a doctor, a chiropractor specifically, um, who understood the needs of an EDI relationship with payers, um, understanding how difficult workers' comp and no fault can be. Uh, the company was started and we are connected to over a thousand payers today. Um, we can connect to any medical billing software uh, system that you might be using um, or an electronic record system which allows for the process to run you know, seamlessly and smoothly from your billing vendor. Uh, we were acquired in 2018 by Care Risk, and we'll talk a little bit more um, about Care Risk um, and how we fit into the big picture. Um, <clears throat> Care Risk Partners <clears throat> is a specialty risk transfer care coordination company, and we serve insurers, government entities, um, and other managed care organizations. Um, our aim really um, is to improve outcomes for, for patients and reduce the overall cost of quality care. How the Intelligent Clearinghouse fits into this is all of what uh, we do as an organization feeds back to the fact that these bills have to be submitted through to the payers. So we are kind of a link in a bigger wheel um, in the risk transfer care coordination uh, world, and we help kind of pull all of that together for our company. I don't want to speak. Shut up. Somebody's not muted, so if you guys could mute your phones, that would be great. Bob mentioned, and we talked, uh, you know, really quickly about the fact that um, um, he has been trying to get some legislation updates from uh, the board to ensure that your group knows specifically 
what's going on um, as it relates to uh, legislative updates. Ooh, sorry about that, we moved too quickly. Um, as he mentioned, uh, we have cleared um, all of the categories for coverage um, as an XML submission partner. Um, and some of the, if you will, some of the expectations that are out there on uh, New York EDI billing are as follows. Some of you may know uh, some of this already, uh, and it is a moving target. Um, so we're trying to keep you know good tabs on it. Uh, phase one was a voluntary submission phase where providers could voluntary sub voluntarily submit that 1500 form. We have been accepting the 1500 form from uh, providers all uh, of last year because frankly, we had a lot of billing software vendors who did not want to um, build a connection any further to the C-series of forms because it was a lot of work uh, for, the, for the billing platforms. Um, so we have been accepting that form for a while and we will continue to accept it. Um, the other part of the phase one voluntary submission is that uh, providers were required or are required to uh, register to be able to submit electronically to the New York Workers' Compensation Board. And if anybody needs any details on how to do that, we can uh, send you some instructions on it. It really is uh, just a registration, but it, it does have to be done before the first electronic uh, claim can be submitted. Um, in phase two, uh, carriers will electronically transmit EOB information uh, back after adjudication. Um, and then we as the clearinghouse will transmit that EOB to you at no charge. Uh, we also transmit EOB information um, after the work comp board uh, does their adjudication. So that's part of a service that we provide. Um, you know, in phase three, mandatory submission. Again, this is, a, this is really the moving target part of the, um, of the, of the process um, eventually. Uh, mandatory submission will be required, and then the C-series of forms will be eliminated. So um, you know, there's a lot of information out there on New York. We do have a state-by-state -state legislative update on our website, uh, which is updated whenever um, information comes through to us. We too, as your organization does, uh, we too have a very good relationship, close relationship uh, with the board. So uh, between Bob's in and our in, we really do hope to be able to provide you with um, all of the information you might need um, as it becomes available uh, through the board. Next, we're gonna jump into how the process works and Karen Normington is gonna speak to that in, in, a, in a little bit of detail and uh, we'll let her jump in from here. Thank you, Sally. So how does this work? How, how do you see this fitting into your workflow? So in the workers' compensation and no-fault world, that, that is particularly what we are. Obviously, Sally's talked about that uh, in some detail for you already, and Bob's already explained that. So we are your, uh, you are what's considered a submitter. So submitters are providers such as yourselves, hospitals, billing companies, and you do that billing on some sort of software. Uh, in that manner, those files, the billing information, in a perfect world, let's say if you're an Eclipse user, because I know that we have some Eclipse people on the, on the line with us. You know, in a perfect world, they have a platform that allows for that billing information and that documentation that's required to travel together. They would travel together into our clearinghouse. Any issues, problems, concerns that happen, we will notify you right away. We put those bills through a validation that allows for you then to and provide you information back. And we allow you to come into our port, into the portal, that you create for your own office and correct those issues. Then we encourage you to go back to your system, make those corrections in your system because you know, you know you're know you not seeing these patients just once. 
you're seeing them multiple times. So you're going to probably be billing for them multiple times. So you don't have to make those same corrections again. So those files can come to us in, a ma in, a, in many different manners, and that's kind of what's listed on the side over there on the left where it talks about submitters. Uh, they can come in an 837 file, an XML file, a CSV uh, file, or if you don't have any of those capabilities, you could even do something as rudimentary as scanning in or keying in your information. And then the beauty of this is if your bill can't travel with its documentation together into our portal, we have lots of different methods to get that documentation attached so that once that information gets into our system, you've done everything that needs to be corrected, it gets then forwarded to the carrier and in a New York a work comp situation as well as to the New York work comp board, okay? Now you're done. Everything is done. There's no more printing. There's no more, uh, you know, those extra 1500 forms. There's no more going and looking for the notes and printing them out and heading to the post office. We do everything for you. So that talks a little bit about the process in a brief nutshell. So we've taken some of the metrics uh, of the information that we've gotten and we've kind of analyzed it. And we've found that 97% of the claims that are received are processed on their first transmission. So how does that happen? Well, that happens by our robust validations. We put those claims through what's required by the board, and we don't let the claim leave until we feel it's at its clear, cleanest version, okay? Our goal is to get a clean claim out and get it processed as quickly as possible for you. So that's what we do. We allow you then, again, like we said, to make those corrections, get those things taken care of. And then by doing this and working this on a daily basis, you free up time in your office. You free up office staff, or if you're doing your own billing, you free up time in your own billing day, uh, work day, to do other things, whether that's read a book, <laughs> um, see an extra patient, um, you know, do some extra follow-up. It allows extra time in your day utilizing our system just because those bills are going to get out and get taken care of for you in a, in a quick and timely manner. We are an end-to-end -end solution. So other, as Sally was mentioning before, you know, you utilize a clearinghouse for your commercial bills. That clearinghouse does not allow you to send the documentation. So rather than dump things to paper, mail them, the potential of them being lost in the mail, our end-to-end -end solution allows you to send the bill, send the documentation together, and it gets out. There's virtually no waiting time for processing and really not a lot of delay in um, the submission. We have a, um, many connections to the largest, direct connections to the largest payers, and, you know, it just gives us that that capability to get those bills on file quickly for you and get them processed and paid out. So Keras Intelligent Clearinghouse, the technology, what is it that we do? Um, you know, we provide fast processing, we provide accuracy, and we increase your cash flow because we're turning over that balance quicker for you. You know, you can increase, by using us, you can increase your practice profitability, prop, profitability and efficiency, uh, it, you know, there's one process now, you know, the bills come to us in one, one manner from your uh, workflow, from your process, and then we take care of what needs to happen, you know, as to getting them out there. We have no implementation fees. We have very competitive pricing, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. We have that real-time acceptor acceptance from the payer. You know, how many times do you call and do you hear that bill is not on file? You're going to see by using our system, we have what's called a an audit trail that starts from the minute the bill comes into our system until the minute it's accepted by the carrier. And over that time period, you will see every step that that bill makes on its journey to get to its destination. You'll see who touched it, you'll see what they did to it, and you'll see the acceptance. So there will no longer be that issue of whether the bill is there, you'll be able to see it. You'll have that proof of submission. You'll have the claim verification within that 24-hour period of the submission of the bill. 
you know, you're reducing your administrative costs. You're re reducing the, the cost of ink, a wear and tear on your printer, just your own time alone, okay? Um, Follow-up calls because you'll be able to see things. You know, here in most cases, I come from the billing world, so I know you would, you know, send out a bill. You would have to call. You would have to confirm that the bill was on file. Then you'd have to call back again and see how the bill processed. So you'll be able to utilize some of that information from our portal. Um, faster processing, you know, those are all things. We're tech-enabled, tech so for when you're sending to us, you know, you're sending to us in an electronics format in most cases. That allows for 50 lines of service. Uh, in an electronic submission out to a carrier, that's going to be unlimited attachment, okay? So you'll be able to send as much documentation as you need. We are one of the only clearinghouses that offer the benefit and eligibility feed. So if you don't have a date of injury, maybe a patient comes in, they don't know um, exactly the date of injury. Maybe it's an old date of injury. They don't remember their claim number. We have some capability for you to be able to utilize entering some information into our benefits and eligibility lookup and finding the correct information. We have an IT team that delivers, you know, seamless integration. They'll work with the software vendors. We do testing. We do whatever needs to be done to help that integration happen. We have cloud-based technology and we have a great implementation and support team. I must be talking too long because Sally keeps flipping the slide. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> So I think we're done with this one. I apologize, but we do no, we do offer a lot of um, of of service. We're you know you've got a salesperson that's going to work with you and help you get things set up and work working. You have an implementation team that's going to stay with you and and work with you and provide training. And like I said, we have a great development and IT team that's going to work with you, whether it's helping you uh, communicate with your software vendor and speak that IT language that all of us you know fake it till we make it kind of way, um, or you know, establish that connection uh, with that software vendor if we don't already have a known partnership with them. And we have live help and support, which is really uh, mm -hmm. critical for day-to-day -day processing. We are HIPAA compliant. We meet all the standard, mandatory state level requirements and we're trusted and established. I mean, most people that are submitting electronically know of us, have heard of us and, um, you know, uh, support us and uh, stand behind us, which is great. These are some of, uh, you know, we're connected to, you know, more than a thousand payers nationwide. We can connect to anyone who is um, accepting bills electronically at this time. If we can't make an electronic connection to a carrier, we, you know, we take over that paper mailing and uh, printing for you and provide you with uh, a, um, <clears throat> a, re a receipt mm -hmm. from the proof of mailing. I apologize, I just lost my train of thought. But these are just some of the carriers that we are connected to, uh, some of our top carriers, but you know, there are many, there are many others on our list. And you can view that on our website, as you can see uh, at carerisk.ic.com. The entire electronic list is there. Software vendor setup. We are connected to and part and have partners with dozens of software vendors. These are some of our major ones. I, I'm going to give a shout out to our Eclipse fans and uh, our Eclipse users that are on the line. Um, you know, our, the partnership that they have built and the new platform that they have out is is great, and um, we appreciate their business and um, that ease of connectivity for their clients. And uh, it just makes that uh, super. Uh, but you know, if you're if the software you use is not on here, it doesn't mean that you are limited and can't use our service because we'll figure out a way to make a connection for you. Okay. So now I think I'm going to turn this back over to Sally for a couple minutes for some. We're going to kind of bounce back and forth and start talking about some frequently asked questions that you know we had talked about um, with Bob and the team and kind of go from there. Absolutely. We have a couple of questions that, um, it looks like we have one question in the chat. Yeah. And um, we also have a couple of questions that uh, we commonly hear uh, in the presentation. So we will uh, we'll address them all. 
Uh, this question in the chat comes from Mark Kaplan, and it says, there are instances with other clearinghouses where the timestamp is there, and we have proof that the claim was accepted, but the carrier indicates that it was never received. What is the scenario? Will you contact the carrier to resolve it, or is it up to us to do it? Often we could not resolve even resubmitting. How would Carisdale deal with this uh, scenario? So as I mentioned, uh, we do have a help and support team. So if you could submit a problem like this to the help and support team, and they would in fact uh, you know, follow through to see where or what the um, the disconnect might be. Um, we, I can tell you, we do, we have had some problems that uh, sound similarly to this one, um, uh, especially when we first integrated some of these payers um, last year, when New Jersey's mandate went into effect, uh, some of the connectivity and uh, processing questions like these did come up, and we will help see through to the payer, you know, what the problem is or where the problem lies so that it can be resolved not only for you in some instances, if it's a, you know, if it's a, if it's a problem that more than one submitter um, is seeing. That's why um, I feel very strongly about the fact that having a live person or, a, you know, being able to reach a person um, on a, at a help desk or help and support line um, is critical to the day-to-day -day processing. Uh, many of the clearing houses out there will ask you to submit a ticket, which then you have to wait for someone to read within 24 or 48 hours and respond to. Um, so I think uh, our help and support could prove, in this case, uh, to be critical to continuing uh, the workflow within the office and ensuring that uh, we could help you resolve and get the answer from the payer um, as quickly as possible. So I hope, Mark, that answers your question. Allie, can I add something? This is Bob. Sure. Mark, um, we had, we've only had one instance, thank God, in our office a couple of years ago. Um, and what we did is we, um, I don't like to, to play around, so I just simply copied the Department of Financial Services in my response <laughs> to them. Um, and that seemed to help expedite whether that was the trick or not. But, um, you know, it's nice to have a partner that will stand up for you as well when you have proof of electronic submission. But uh, certainly copying the, the Department of Financial Services or if it's a work comp claim, I don't know, the work comp board, but... Uh, I think, I, I don't know if it was a blues claim or what it was, but simply copying the DFS, even if it wasn't a claim that uh, New York State was responsible for, it may have been an ERISA claim. I think just prodding them to know that we're serious, we sent this in, this is your problem, not ours. Just pay our bill. Thanks, Doc. Great. That's a great point. To jump into some um, frequently asked questions, uh, normally people will ask how long does it take to implement this solution and in most cases it's pretty quick as Karen mentioned there are a lot of software vendors out there that we're already connected to but it really takes three easy steps uh, and sometimes the third step is uh, is non-existent because your software vendor has already handled it but you do have to enroll uh, with care risk and create an account. Once your account is established, uh, we get an automated uh, message that says you've set up that account. Uh, we do have to activate the account um, for purposes of ensuring that you do in fact want to have a relationship with us. There's no cost to enroll. It's pretty easy. There's only four or five you know, pieces of information that you have to provide uh, to set up the account. Um, to register for the account, excuse me, um, but uh, we do like to verify because sometimes we have patients setting uh, setting up accounts and, and we know that they're, they're not sure about what we can do for them because uh, our relationship really doesn't sit with the patient. Once you enroll with uh, CIC, uh, we would help you contact your so software uh, vendor to enable the connection to us. Um, and in some cases, in a lot of cases, um, the uh, software vendors that we are already established with. Um, it is a really quick phone call or email to their customer service team 
and it's as quick as them turning on the functionality within your system. Back to our friends at Eclipse. Uh, they are real good about that. Uh, we also have a great relationship with Cairo Touch, um, so it, it happens pretty quickly. Um, the third step, which is uh, file testing or file test exchange. Again, in those established scenarios where we've already uh, created that relationship with the billing software vendor, we don't have to do this step because it's been done prior to uh, your enrollment. And then, uh, you know, once your software vendor is contacted, you can really, uh, you can go live and we offer uh, all of the training and all of the things that you might need uh, for your team, your billers, uh, to really hold your hand over the uh, early stages of our relationship to make sure that you know what you're doing, to make sure that you have no questions, you know, to make sure that there's no problems. Um, and um, as we'll talk a little further about cost, uh, really the only cost is based on the bills that you process. So uh, there are no additional fees for anything, training, file transfer, maintenance. Uh, you know, I, I've heard them all in a lot of different um, pricing scenarios. All we charge is for the bills that you process. So it's a simple setup, it's a simple enrollment, and the cost is just based on the volume of bills that you process. Um, so that's pretty quick. Um, we do have another question um, in the chat uh, from Paul that says, do you track the response time um, of the payers? That's a great question, Paul. Uh, I'm assuming you mean, uh, when you say response, do you mean, um, if you mean response that they've received the bill or payment response? Um, we do uh, track both of those through the payers that we have relationships with. Um, and we see um, very quick response. Oh, okay, payment response, great. Um, very quick response on acceptance um, and payment response, and we'll talk about in a little more detail, but um, usually on average uh, with the national payers about, about 14 days, 14 to 21 days um, uh, does vary by payer but um, it is about two weeks. So a dramatic increase, Karen spoke a little bit about you know, this in the beginning of the presentation, a dramatic increase in terms of uh, reducing the, um, you know, the, the cash flow within your practice. So uh, from that perspective, it's, it's awesome. Um, Karen, I don't know if you want to uh, jump in and just talk a little bit about uh, how um, a provider might go about seeing a demo. Sure. Uh, you know, just to add to um, Dr. Chili's uh, response there uh, in terms of payment responses, some of our carriers, and I don't know if I mentioned this or even Sally uh, mentioned it, some of our carriers on an electronic submission will, will feed us back uh, 835 response and EOB response. If they do, we will feed it back into the patient's account within the portal. So uh, it's not every carrier, it's not every time, but there are some that will. And uh, if they do, uh, again, we will give you that response. When you're looking at our payer ID list on the main Care Risk IC page, one of the columns that you'll see in the listing is whether the carrier will feed us back an EOB response or not, and you'll be able to see that there. Um, so can I see a demonstration? Of course, we're, we're offer, you know, we love to show the integration between how the two systems are connected and how they work. Um, so your information in your portal, this happens to be um, a nice, view of uh, the Eclipse page. Uh, so the provider will utilize their billing software. They'll electronically submit the claim data and the documentation, if they can, in that perfect world, to our, uh, to the portal that they've created for in CIC. The claim goes through that edit, that validation. If the bill and the document travel together, then you know if there's any correction or anything that needs to be made, like I said before, that can be made. If not, then the bill may fall right into processing, which would be great for you. Um, 
but if need be, we have capabilities, lots of different capabilities for including the attachments. We can show you how to do that. And the audit trail is kind of step three, the payer acceptance uh, of the claim and the acknowledgement. That is a view of kind of what our audit trail looks like. So you can kind of see the information coming into the system. If it were a little bigger and in a demo situation, we can show you how that works. But you'll see the dates and times and like we said, all the milestones it makes uh, till it's delivered. And then the fourth slide kind of indicates the uh, EOB that we were just talking about in terms of the payment response. So when those come in, they will be fed into that audit trail. They'll be kind of highlighted in orange. Our system just got a beautiful, it's getting a makeover a little bit over time, not changing it too quickly at once so that you don't recognize it. But one of the newest features that were just, is just been implemented is a, on the main page um, is the information that indicates if any EOBs have come in. So they're all batched together in one spot, which is really great. So you don't have to go digging around for them. So that's an awesome feature that we offer as well. Again, um, Sally talked a little bit about, and she's gonna go on with this page right now too. Well, this was a question that Paul asked. Um, we we kind of covered this was uh, earlier uh, about payment and what we see um, based on the data that we uh, are tracking um, for our um, electronic payments from the payers. Um, so we talked about this a little bit, 14 days. We did get an, uh, again, we appreciate your time this evening. Uh, we'll send you the follow-up uh, presentation. And if there's any other questions or interest in a demo, uh, we're happy to make that happen. Thank you so much for your time tonight.